Zimbabwe's most controversial businessman, Kudata Giri, has now taken to the pulpit to respond to allegations of corruption against him. Tagwire, the name behind Command Agriculture, Sakunda Holdings, and many top performing companies in the country, is also an order in the Seventh day Adventist Church. He was placed under sanctions by the United States of America over allegations of corruption. Excerpts of his story first aired on social media platforms are below. Most of you do not know. You think that Sakunda started three months ago or two years ago when President Mnangagwa became president. In 2003, that's when we started Sakunda. 2001, actually. That's when we started Sakunda. Now 21 years old. Do you know, we started with a seed of 7,500. 7,500. But within the third month, I'm talking about the seed, Obey. Third month, we chose to sell our house so that we can build our business. And within the... Th First year, we were selling 500,000 liters a month. While others were buying houses and cars, we were building our business. Ten years on, we were the largest company in Zimbabwe. And when we became the largest company in Zimbabwe, selling fuel, about 70% of the market, that's when everyone started to see. And when the Adventists saw Sakunda, they said, ah, which politician is in this? Because you look at the results, not the journey. That's what you look at. That's what you look at. You don't see my 10 years that I actually sold my house in Westgate, 142 Wetro, Wetro Road, that I built from 98. Took me two years. I sold it for 21,000 pounds. 21,000, which was enough to do two tankers of fuel. That is where my dream started. Are you following? That was the seed that was placed in me. And I built it to the company. I never bought a house for myself until 20, 2010 because I was building the business. Because an asset must produce some value. Are you following? A house takes away from you. Because when you have a house, you are not going to get income from the house. If you are working, like some of us are going to want to, you, an ass, a house is an asset. And this is what I did as I was walking my journey. In 2012, as the hurdles were coming before me, I then built a, a, a country to support this country. And when I built it, the purpose was to make sure that the fuel was available close to us. And when I was doing that, Pastor, you were talking about it. God opened another avenue. I actually donated it for $12 million. When I did that, and I got, when I did that, I got to do more fuel by just doing that work. And when I did that, I got to 70, 75%. I remember my COO is here. He went and he was, he, he caused, caused us problems because he was now talking. Ah, you know, we, are, we did this month, we did 87% uh, of the market. And everyone was worried, who is Kudakwashita Gure? Who is doing 87% of the market? And the security people came to my office. Who are you? And I said, okay, my name is Kudakwashita Gure. Okay. And who is uh, the, your partners? Oh, my wife and myself. Sandra, Sandra, Sakunda, Sandra and Kuda. Ah. No, no, no. Who is behind you? It was only Kuda and Sand. I am telling you the mind that you have right now, as class of 22, you can do many things and be able to succeed. If you just put your mind to it. I want to tell you something. Today I'm too excited. Please forgive me, my friends. 2015, I wanted to leave the country. I was, um, I was doing well in the international markets. Those of you who know, know. I was doing very well. And I was looking at the troubles that Zimbabwe was going through. Dr. Choga actually came and saw me and prayed for me. One of them showed me my place. And while I was teetering, I was banking in the biggest banks in the world. 
I had everything that I wanted. 2014, somewhere there. And I got on a plane. When I got onto that plane, my mind made up. I was sent on a government assignment to go to Equatorial Guinea. And I was, I was going to Equatorial Guinea. The man that I was with began to tell me about the economy, about the drought that was coming. And as I was going there, he began to talk to me. When I, which was the El Nino, when I got there, I started thinking about it and planning for it. In a week, I came back. And when I came back, I started sitting down and planning this strategy. I called my friends, and we sat up to 4 a.m. Guys, there is a drought that is coming. And I did a project proposal for contract funding, which you now call command agriculture. And I had a problem because there was what was called the RTGS at that time. And there was no money which was moving out of the country. So I had this problem. But at the same time, there was a bigger problem for the country. I gave them in 2015. The government took one year thinking about it. And when they were thinking about it, they got offers from other people to do the same program. My interest rate was the lowest. It was 4%. When we started the program, no one thought that it was going to succeed. And no one talked about it. When it was successful in 2016, 17, going to 17, the U.S. Agricultural Department wrote that Zimbabwe is doing one of the best things in command agriculture. U.S. government. When they then begin to, begin to think who I was supporting, that I was supporting the government of the day. They then said, you stole three billion. And I was placed on sanctions. Are you following? So, this is what I was, we're trying to do. To try and make the land become successful. Now, class of 22, you are going to meet challenges along the way. You are going to meet them. When you have a vision, do not stop. Work and look for it. And there is going to be an American government kind of situation which is going to come to you and say you can't succeed. And when they see you succeeding, they are going to put sanctions on your life. Because we always have sanctions that come around us in one way or the other. Sometimes it's our families. Sometimes it's our friends that tell us that we can't make it. And then they put spanners in the works. They are putting sanctions on you too. But class of 22, the God of the Jew is also the God that you worship. Now, finally, I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, we, we, as Adventists, we believe in the God of the Jew. The reason why we are at this institution is that we believe in the God of the Jew. We believe in him. But we do not want to experience him. Those who are listening to my voice do not want his experience. They just want to believe him. Even the devil believes that there is a God. I am challenging you, class of 22. Believe in God, but experience him. Get away from the land 
that you are sitting on. He has given you a place to go.